Suleiman I, Ottoman Turkish, Turkish, I. Suleiman, almost always Canyoni Sultan Suleiman, November 6, 1494, September 7, 1566, commonly known as Suleiman the Magnificent in the West and Canyoni, the Lawgiver, in the East, was the tenth and longest reigning great Sultan of the Ottoman Empire from 1520 to his death in 1566. Under his administration, the Ottoman state ruled over 20 to 30 million people. Suleiman became a prominent monarch of 16th century Europe, presiding over the apex of the Ottoman Empire's military, political and economic power. Suleiman personally led Ottoman armies in conquering the Christian strongholds of Belgrade and Rhodes as well as most of Hungary before his conquests were checked at the Siege of Vienna in 1529. He annexed much of the Middle East in his conflict with the Persian Safavids and large areas of North Africa as far west as Algeria. Under his rule, the Ottoman fleet dominated the seas from the Mediterranean to the Red Sea and through the Persian Gulf. At the helm of an expanding empire, Suleiman personally instituted major legislative changes relating to society, education, taxation and criminal law. His canonical law, or the canons, fixed the form of the empire for centuries after his death. He was a distinguished poet and goldsmith. He also became a great patron of culture, overseeing the golden age of the Ottoman Empire in its artistic, literary and architectural development. Breaking with Ottoman tradition, Suleiman married Roxlana, a former Christian girl converted to Islam from his harem, who became subsequently known and influential as Harem Sultan. Their son Selim II succeeded Suleiman following his death in 1566 after 46 years of rule, thus beginning a long state of stagnation and decline during Selim II's reign. Suleiman's previous heir parents Mimd and Mustafa had died, the former from smallpox and the latter had been strangled to death 13 years previously at the Sultan's order. His other son Bayezid had been killed by his support in Salim's order in 1561 with four of his sons. Alternative names and titles, Suleiman the Magnificent, as he was known in the West, was also called Suleiman I, and Suleiman the Lawgiver for his complete reconstruction of the Ottoman legal system. Early Life Suleiman was born in Trabzon along the east coast of the Black Sea, probably on November 6, 1494. His mother was A's half Sultan, she was possibly the daughter of Minli I Gyre, a descendant of Genghis Khan, through Jachi, little is known of her other than that she died in 1534. Education At the age of seven, Suleiman was sent to study science history, literature, theology and military tactics in the schools of the imperial top cap palace in Constantinople, modern Istanbul. As a young man, he befriended Pargal Ibrahim, a slave who later became one of his most trusted advisors. Viceroy in Anatolia, from the age of 17, he was appointed as the governor of first Kaffa, Theodosia then Saryukin, Manisa, with a brief tenure at Hadrianople, now Edirne. Accession, upon the death of his father, Salim I, 1465-1520, Suleiman entered Constantinople and ascended to the throne as the 10th Ottoman Sultan. An early description of Suleiman, a few weeks following his accession, was provided by the Venetian envoy Bartolomeo Contarini, he is 26 years of age, tall, but wiry, and of a delicate complexion. His neck is a little too long, his face thin, and his nose aquiline. He has a shade of a mustache and a small beard, nevertheless he has a pleasant mien, 
though his skin tends to be a light pallor. He is said to be a wise lord, fond of study, and all men hope for good from his rule. Some historians claim that in his youth Suleiman had an admiration for Alexander the Great. He was influenced by Alexander's vision of building a world empire that would encompass the East and the West, and this created a drive for his subsequent military campaigns in Asia and in Africa, as well as in Europe. Military Campaigns, Conquests in Europe Upon succeeding his father, Suleiman began a series of military conquests, eventually suppressing a revolt led by the Ottoman-appointed governor of Damascus in 1521. Suleiman soon made preparations for the conquest of Belgrade from the Kingdom of Hungary, something his great-grandfather Memtu had failed to achieve because of John Hunyadi's strong defense in the region. Its capture was vital in removing the Hungarians and Croats who, following the defeats of the Serbs, Bulgarians, Albanians and the Byzantines, remained the only formidable force who could block further Ottoman gains in Europe. Suleiman encircled Belgrade and began a series of heavy bombardments from an island in the Danube. Belgrade, with a garrison of only 700 men, and receiving no aid from Hungary, fell in August 1521. The fall of Christendom's major stronghold spread fear across Europe. As the ambassador of the Holy Roman Empire to Constantinople was to note, the capture of Belgrade was at the origin of the dramatic events which engulfed Hungary. It led to the death of King Louis, the capture of Buda, the occupation of Transylvania the ruin of a flourishing kingdom and the fear of neighboring nations that they would suffer the same fate. The road to Hungary and Austria lay open, but Suleiman turned his attention instead to the eastern Mediterranean island of Rhodes, the home base of the Knights Hospitaller. In the summer of 1522, taking advantage of the large navy he inherited from his father, Suleiman dispatched an armada of some 400 ships towards Rhodes, while personally leading an army of 100,000 across Asia Minor to a point opposite the island itself. Here Suleiman built a large fortification, Marmaris Castle, that served as a base for the Ottoman navy. Following the brutal five-month siege of Rhodes, 1522, Rhodes capitulated and Suleiman allowed the Knights of Rhodes to depart. The Knights of Rhodes eventually formed a new base in Malta, becoming known as Knights of Malta, even now. As relations between Hungary and the Ottoman Empire deteriorated, Suleiman resumed his campaign in Central Europe and on August 29, 1526, he defeated Louis II of Hungary. 1506 to 26 at the battle of Mohax in its wake hungarian resistance collapsed and the ottoman empire became the preeminent power in central of europe upon encountering the lifeless body of king louis suleiman is said to have lamented i came indeed in arms against him but it was not my wish that he should be thus cut off before he scarcely tasted the sweets of life and royalty. While Suleiman was campaigning in Hungary, Turkmen tribes in central Anatolia revolted under the leadership of Kalendra Silabai. Some Hungarian nobles proposed that Ferdinand, who was ruler of neighboring Austria and tied to Louis II's family by marriage, be king of Hungary citing previous agreements that the Habsburgs would take the Hungarian throne if Louis died without heirs. However, other nobles turned to the nobleman John Zapalia, who was being supported by Suleiman. Under Charles V and his brother Ferdinand I, the Habsburgs reoccupied Buda and took possession of Hungary. Reacting in 1529, Suleiman marched through the valley of the Danube and regained control of Buda. In the following autumn, his forces laid siege to Vienna. 
This was to be the Ottoman Empire's most ambitious expedition and the apogee of its drive to the west. With a reinforced garrison of 16,000 men, the Austrians inflicted the first defeat on Suleiman, sowing the seeds of a bitter Ottoman Habsburg rivalry, which lasted until the 20th century. His second attempt to conquer Vienna failed in 1532, with Ottoman forces delayed by the siege of guns, failing to reach Vienna. In both cases, the Ottoman army was plagued by bad weather, forcing them to leave behind essential siege equipment, and was hobbled by overstretched supply lines. By the 1540s a renewal of the conflict in Hungary presented Suleiman with the opportunity to avenge the defeat suffered at Vienna. In 1541 the Habsburgs once again engaged in conflict with the Ottomans, by attempting to lay siege to Buda. With their efforts repulsed and more Habsburg fortresses captured by the Ottomans in two consecutive campaigns in 1541 and in 1544 as a result, Ferdinand and his brother Charles V were forced to conclude a humiliating five-year treaty with Suleiman. Ferdinand renounced his claim to the Kingdom of Hungary and was forced to pay a fixed yearly sum to the Sultan for the Hungarian lands he continued to control. Of more symbolic importance, the treaty referred to Charles V not as Emperor, but as the King of Spain, leading Suleiman to identify as the true Caesar. With his main European rivals subdued, Suleiman ensured that the Ottoman Empire had a powerful role in the political landscape of Europe for some years to come. Ottoman Safavid War As Suleiman stabilized his European frontiers, he now turned his attention to the ever-present threat posed by the Shia Safavid dynasty of Persia. Two events in particular were to precipitate a recurrence of tensions. First, Shah Tamasp had the Baghdad governor loyal to Suleiman killed and replaced with an adherent of the Shah, and second, the governor of Bitlis had defected and sworn allegiance to the Safavids. As a result, in 1533, Suleiman ordered his Grand Vizier Pargal Ibrahim Pasha to lead an army into Eastern Asia Minor where he retook Bitlis and occupied Tabriz without resistance. Having joined Ibrahim in 1534, Suleiman made a push towards Persia, only to find the Shah sacrificing territory instead of facing a pitched battle, resorting to harassment of the Ottoman army as it proceeded along the harsh interior. When in the following year Suleiman and Ibrahim made a grand entrance into Baghdad, its commander surrendered the city thereby confirming Suleiman as the leader of the Sunni Islamic world and the legitimate successor to the Sunni Abbasid Caliphs. Moreover, the fact Suleiman restored the grave of Sunni Imam Abu Hanifa also strengthened his credentials and claim to the Caliphate. Attempting to defeat the Shawans and Fraal, Suleiman embarked upon a second campaign in 1548 to 1549. As in the previous attempt, Tamasp avoided confrontation with the Ottoman army and instead chose to retreat, using scorched earth tactics in the process and exposing the Ottoman army to the harsh winter of the Caucasus. Suleiman abandoned the campaign with temporary Ottoman gains in Tabriz and the Ramia region, a lasting presence in the province of Van, control of the western half of Azerbaijan and some forts in Georgia. In 1553 Suleiman began his third and final campaign against the Shah. Having initially lost territories in Erzurum to the Shah's son, Suleiman retaliated by recapturing Erzurum crossing the upper Euphrates and laying waste to parts of Persia. The Shah's army continued its strategy of avoiding the Ottomans, leading to a stalemate from which neither army made any significant gain. In 1554, a settlement was signed which was to conclude Suleiman's Asian campaigns. Part of the treaty included and confirmed the return of Tabriz, but secured Baghdad, Lower Mesopotamia 
the mouths of the river Euphrates and Tigris, as well as part of the Persian Gulf. The Shah also promised to cease all raids into Ottoman territory. Campaigns in the Indian Ocean Ottoman ships had been sailing in the Indian Ocean since the year 1518. Ottoman admirals such as Hadims Yulman Pasha, Sliali Reis and Kurtaglu Hzr Reis are known to have voyaged to the Mughal imperial ports of Thatta, Surat and Janjira. The Mughal emperor Akbar himself is known to have exchanged six documents with Suleiman the Magnificent. In the Indian Ocean, Suleiman led several naval campaigns against the Portuguese in an attempt to remove them and re-establish trade with India. Aden in Yemen was captured by the Ottomans in 1538, in order to provide an Ottoman base for raids against Portuguese possessions on the western coast of modern India and Pakistan. Sailing on to India the Ottomans failed against the Portuguese at the Siege of Diu in September 1538, but then returned to Aden, where they fortified the city with 100 pieces of artillery. From this base, Suleiman Pasha managed to take control of the whole country of Yemen, also taking Sana'a. Aden rose against the Ottomans however and invited the Portuguese instead so that the Portuguese were in control of the city until its seizure by Piri race in the capture of Aden, 1548. With its strong control of the Red Sea, Suleiman successfully managed to dispute control of the Indian trade routes to the Portuguese and maintained a significant level of trade with the Mughal Empire of South Asia throughout the 16th century. His Admiral Piri Reis led an Ottoman fleet in the Indian Ocean, achieving the capture of Muscat in 1552. From 1526 till 1543, Suleiman stationed over 900 Turkish soldiers to fight alongside the Somali Adil Sultanate led by Ahmad ibn Ibrahim al Ghazi during the conquest of Abyssinia. After the First Adjuran Portuguese War, the Ottoman Empire would in 1559 absorb the weakened Adil Sultanate into its domain. This expansion fathered Ottoman rule in Somalia and the Horn of Africa. This also increased its influence in the Indian Ocean to compete with the Portuguese Empire with its close ally the Ajuran Empire. In 1564, Suleiman received an embassy from Asa, a Sultanate on Sumatra in modern Indonesia, requesting Ottoman support against the Portuguese. As a result, an Ottoman expedition to Asa was launched, which was able to provide extensive military support to the Asnese. The discovery of new maritime trade routes by Western European states allowed them to avoid the Ottoman trade monopoly. The Portuguese discovery of the Cape of Good Hope in 1488 initiated a series of Ottoman-Portuguese naval wars in the Indian Ocean throughout the 16th century. The Ajuran Sultanate allied with the Ottomans defied the Portuguese economic monopoly in the Indian Ocean by employing a new coinage which followed the Ottoman pattern thus proclaiming an attitude of economic independence in regard to the Portuguese. Mediterranean and North Africa, having consolidated his conquests on land, Suleiman was greeted with the news that the fortress of Coroni in Moria, the modern Peloponnese, peninsular Greece, had been lost to Charles V's admiral, Andrea Doria. The presence of the Spanish in the eastern Mediterranean concerned Suleiman, who saw it as an early indication of Charles V's intention to rival Ottoman dominance in the region. Recognizing the need to reassert naval preeminence in the Mediterranean, Suleiman appointed an exceptional naval commander in the form of Karadin, known to Europeans as Barbarossa. Once appointed Admiral-in-Chief, Barbarossa was charged with rebuilding the Ottoman fleet, to such an extent that the Ottoman navy equaled in number those of all other Mediterranean countries put together. In 1535, Charles V won an important victory against the Ottomans at Tunis, 
which together with the war against Venice the following year, led Siolomon to accept proposals from Francis I of France to form an alliance against Charles. In 1538, the Spanish fleet was defeated by Barabrasa at the Battle of Prusa, securing the eastern Mediterranean for the Turks for 33 years, until the defeat at the Battle of Lepanto in 1571. East of Morocco, huge Muslim territories in North Africa were annexed. The Barbary states of Tripolitania, Tunisia and Algeria became autonomous provinces of the empire, serving as the leading edge of Suleiman's conflict with Charles V, whose attempt to drive out the Turks failed in 1541. The piracy carried on thereafter by the Barbary pirates of North Africa can be seen in the context of the wars against Spain. For a short period Ottoman expansion secured naval dominance in the Mediterranean. In 1542, facing a common Habsburg enemy, Francis I sought to renew the Franco-Ottoman alliance. As a result, Suleiman dispatched 100 galleys under Barbarossa to assist the French in the western Mediterranean. Barbarossa pillaged the coast of Naples and Sicily before reaching France, where Francis made Toulon the Ottoman admiral's naval headquarters. The same campaign saw Barbarossa attack and capture Nice in 1543. By 1544, a peace between Francis I and Charles V had put a temporary end to the alliance between France and the Ottoman Empire. Elsewhere in the Mediterranean, when the Knights Hospitallers were re-established as the Knights of Malta in 1530. Their actions against Muslim navies quickly drew the ire of the Ottomans, who assembled another massive army in order to dislodge the knights from Malta. The Ottomans invaded Malta in 1565, undertaking the Great Siege of Malta, which began on 18 May and lasted until 8 September, and is portrayed vividly in the frescoes of Matteo Perez del Show in the Hall of St. Michael and St. George. At first it seemed that this would be a repeat of the battle on Rhodes, with most of Malta's cities destroyed and half the knights killed in battle, but a relief force from Spain entered the battle, resulting in the loss of 10,000 Ottoman troops and the victory of the local Maltese citizenry.